So I used my actual workshop worksheet in the teaching of the Introduction to Proportional Relationships tutorial playlist, where I broke down each of the skills that you are likely to see in the content assessment. But I wanted to do an extra video that's shorter for the people who are really close or really almost ready to take the exam or just need a quick review. And this is not meant as a detailed teaching of the skills. So I recommend that you watch the other playlist if that's what you're looking for. This is just to see if you're ready to take the introduction to proportional relationships or as a last review. Now, the first objective is to determine whether two quantities are in a proportional relationship. You, and you're gonna see this in word problems, you're gonna see this in tables, and you're gonna see this in graphs. And we've talked about this before. A proportional relationship is one where the relationship has a constant, and that constant determines the relationship every time. So in a table, you can very quickly check by making sure that each of the pairings have the same constant when you divide one number by the other. And you can do it in any order, but I'm gonna do 15 divided by two here, which is 7.5. If you do 20 divided by four, you get five, right? And so you can see that that's not a constant of proportionality because every single pairing does not already have the same K. So that is not proportional because the K is changing. How about this one? Uh, the first is 65 divided by one. I always like to do right divided by left. And, and the second one is 195 divided by three. And in both those cases, the constant is 65. So you might be tempted to say, oh, it's already constant, but I always like to check at least three lines. If you do 325 divided by five, you also get 65. So there is a constant and therefore this is proportional. So what you're looking for again in tables is to make sure that each of the pairings has the same K. On a graph, what you're looking for is a straight diagonal line starting from zero, zero. So this is not even a straight line. So definitely not proportional. Now, this one is a straight diagonal line starting from 0, 0, so absolutely is a proportional relationship. Now, what about with a word problem? Like I said, you're looking for descriptions in which the relationship has a constant feature, right? So, for example, you see she sold two bracelets for $3 and then three braces for $6. So the relationship between the first pairing, so it's just like you're doing it on a table. You have to check the pairings and make sure the relationship is constant. So... Uh, the first time she sold it, it's like a $1.5 per bracelet because you do three divided by two and you get 1.5. The second time, uh, it's, it's she's charging $2 per bracelet because six divided by three is two. So that is not proportional. Checking the second one here, Jeff ran four miles in 20 minutes, right? So if you do four, uh, or tw uh, four miles divided by 20 minutes, you were going to get 0.2 for that relationship. But if you get six miles and divided by 24 minutes, you get 0.25 for that relationship. So again, not constant. You're looking for the numbers to have the same relationship each time. So you use the pairings to figure out the unit rate. And if the unit rate is changing, that it's not a constant relationship. It's not proportional. Why? Okay, so if you tried 29 glasses in nine cases, the constant there would be three. That's the unit rate. So three glasses per case. And then if you do... 81 glasses in 27 cases, once again, you get three glasses per case. So that is a really good candidate uh, for, for that, for being the right answer, because we got the same constant each time. Uh, if you say Fernanda placed eight pencils in two boxes, so the constant, the unit rate there will be four pencils per box, because you do eight divided by two. And, and if you do 16 pencils in eight boxes, then it's going to be two pencils per, per box, and so the constant changed. So as expected, C is the only one that's right because the pairings are the same, uh, show the same constant, right? So it's kind of like you're doing it off the table, except instead of giving it to you in a table, they give you in a sentence with the pairings, and you have to see if that's a constant relationship or not, right? They may also have word problems that describe a situation. You have to think to yourself, is that a situation where the rate would be constant? Like for example, um, height over over your age well that's not going to be constant because you don't grow at the same rate throughout your life so not a proportional relationship right so that's kind of like what you have to think about when you try and look at word problems the second objective is to actually figuring out for the most part is figuring out what the constant is and then using that to come up with an equation now this, that skill it involves basically uh 
the same kind of principle as before, where you have to figure out the cost of proportionality first, right? So if you doing this from a word problem, again, you're going to have pairings that you can use to figure out the K. So for example, three pounds of cherries cost $15.90, five pounds cost $26.50, nine pounds cost $47.70. You can use any of those pairings if this is truly a constant uh, to actually figure out your K. Remember, K is just Y over X. So if this is truly proportional, it doesn't really matter which of the pairings you use. Just make sure that within that you pick a pattern that's within one sentence. Each sentence should be one pairing that you can use, right? So I'm going to use the 1590 and the three pounds. So if you use that, 15, 90, divided by 3. And when you put that in a calculator, you get 5.3 as your answer. My 5.3 what? Well, 5.3 pounds, or five, we put dollars on top, right? So 5.3 dollars per pound. Remember, unit rates always have units. And I like to put the units because it helps me make sure that I make the equation in the right order, too. Now, equations for proportional relationships are always in the y equals kx format. So that means that whatever I put on top of my k or the quantity that I put on top of my division has to be the quantity that I put on the left side of my equation. Whatever quantity I put on the bottom, of my k has to be the quantity that I put on the right side of my equation. Now, they want an equation that gives the total cost of pounds of cherries. So they're actually calling the cost y. So I got ahead of myself and I started calculating it, assuming that they were going to do that. But it's very important to read the problem first and make sure that you put the right number in the right place, right? So they want cost per pound because they actually tell you that, that they're going to want to cost as the Y and pound as the X. Luckily, that is what I did in this case, right? But what you first need to do before you actually try to do the problem is to see what is the unit rate they want. What do they want to put on the top? And they're telling you that they want the cost on top and the pounds on the bottom. Now, if they want the, cop, the pounds on the top, they are also on the equation, the pounds are going to be on the left. So again, whatever you put on the top, gets listed first on the equation. So that means you would have cost C equals, then you have to put your K, which you figured out already is 5.3. So I'm going to put that in blue here, 5.3. And I'm actually going to write that C in red since I, I used the red arrow to symbolize that. So C, as in the cost that I put on the Y, K that I figured out before, and then finally, the x variable, which is uh, the pounds of cherries. So that could be a representation for your relationship. So the secret here is to make sure that you write the, the equation in the same sequence as the problem requests. So if you want pounds per, per cost, it would be the other way around. You would actually have to flip the entire relationship and your k. So that's important because you're going to get the wrong answer choices if you do it in the other sequence. So they said cost per pound. So you list the cost first and then you list the pounds second. You put the cost on top and then the pounds on the bottom of your K. Whatever you put on the top of your K goes to the left of the equation. Whatever you put on the bottom of your K goes to the right of the equation. So let's try that again on the next problem here. So we have six apples for $2.7. Why an equation that can be used to express the relationship between the price T and the number of apples that you buy, right? So they want price T to the number of apples that you buy. So in the, I write in the same sequence that they give me in the problem. Now, since I write the T first, when I'm trying to figure out my K, I'm going to put the T on top and the apples on the bottom. And that way, I will have the, the price T per apples. 
right? Which is what they were asking me for. So then you would have put the price on top. So that's 2.7. And then apples on the bottom, which is six. And now I'm trying to figure out my K over here. So after putting that in the calculator, you figure out that that's 0. 0.45 or 0. 0.45. Now, what is the unit here? Well, this would be price for Apple, right? So I always like to think about the unit, like I said. And then it makes sense because I'm putting price first and Apple's second. So then all I have to do is complete my K in between. Now, remember that your K has to be the same thing that you put on top, has to be listed first. The thing you put in the bottom has to be listed second. And that's why I put price 2.7 on top and apples on the bottom. So that's how you would do it off a word problem. What if you had a graph? Well, then for graphs, this is the y-axis, right? And this is the x-axis. K is always going to be y over x. And the equation is always going to be y equals kx. So that means what you need to do is to find a k, you grab a y value, and divide by a corresponding x value. So right here we have 8 for my y, which is 4 for the x. So I do 8 divided by 4 to try to get the k, right? So you're going to do 8 divided by 4. And if you do that, of course, you get 2. And the unit here would be length in inches divided by months. So you get 2 inches per month. And I like to think about the unit once again, because with the unit, I make sure that I put things in the right order. So if I put inches on top, inches is, is going to be my Y value or your length, L, right? And then you put the K, which was 2, and then the X, which is months. And boom, you have an equation that can represent the graph. So again, steps. Figured out what the Y quantity is. List that. Figured out what the K is by getting a Y value and a corresponding X value and doing Y divided by X. Be careful. Don't do 4 divided by 8. Do 8 divided by 4, right? You got to do it in the right order. Y on top, X on the bottom. And then licks the X variable, which in this case was months, so I called it M, right? So let's try the same thing one with tables to finish off this workshop. So the same kind of principle applies. Now, you got to make sure that most of the problems are going to tell you in which order they want you to do it. So, like, for example, if they want um, the – this one is not actually specifying that, but if they will probably usually say C per N or N per C so that you know in which order you have to divide. You just listen to the problem. Per or of means divided by, right? Of, out of, that means divided by. Per or out of means divided by. So if you hear per – that's what they're telling you. They're telling you what to put on top and what to put on the bottom. So if I say C per N, I want C on top and N on the bottom, right? So, but technically you could do it either way. You just have to make sure you do it right on the sequence that they tell you to do it. But let's assume they were doing C per N. If they're doing C per N, I have to figure out my K by getting 24 divided by six, which is four. So this, if my K is four here, because what I did is that I got C divided by N. Now, if I did C divided by N, when I try to make the equation, remember, whatever I put on the top of my K, which was the C, gets listed, listed on the left. Then I write my K, which in case this case was 4. And then I write the X, which in this case was the thing I put on the bottom, which was N. And so I have a relationship that works every time. You could have written this relationship in the opposite direction, though. You could have done N on the left, which because you put it on the top, and C on the right because you put it on the bottom. Now, if you do it that way, that's as if you're doing 6 divided by 24, right, which is going to give you the other way around with your constant. So if you flip your letters, you also have to flip your constant upside down. And so the answer choices, if they don't specify in which sequence they want you to do it, could be either one of those relationships, either getting the top divided by the bottom or the bottom divided by the top on the table or left by right or right by left. Just make sure that in whichever sequence you do it, you make the equation match. 
Whatever you put on top of your K has to be to the left of your equation. Whatever you put on the bottom of the K has to be to the right of your equation, right? And then if you flip the letters, you also have to flip the K. So if you do it one way and you can't find a single option that works, try to flip the letters and then flip the K and see if that makes one of the options work. But in questions that specify the sequence that you need to do it in, do it in the sequence that they tell you, all right? Whatever they list first, you put on top and to the left. Whatever they list second, you put it on the bottom or to the right, just like the word problems that we did. And on graphs, you always put the y-axis first and the x-axis next. So always y-axis on the top and x-axis on the bottom. Okay? So that's it. I hope you found this helpful. And um, good luck on the assessment.